Prophet he was extremely, uh, he, was, he was very easy going at home. He was very, very friendly at home. He used to laugh and joke and smile and talk and engage in conversation, do household chores. He was like normal at home. But when the Adhan would be called, the wives of the Prophet would say, he would become a stranger to us. It's like we didn't even know him. That's it. He had no time for anyone. He had no time for anything now. Because now was the time for Salah. So inshallah, that's how we need to implement our Salah within our lives. And then when we start to implement Salah, the other thing I was mentioning about the social aspect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran already tells us. Allah tells us in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munka. When you observe Salah properly, Salah automatically starts to take you away, starts to lead you away, starts to dissuade you from engaging in things that are evil, even socially and personally in your own personal life. The other thing that I wanted to talk about real briefly was, where has this ayah been placed? This is very, very interesting. The Quran is divine. The Quran is the word of Allah, it's the speech of Allah. It's divinely structured. It's not coincidental. Every ayah where it's been placed has been placed there for a strategic purpose, for a reason. It serves a purpose. So when you look at this ayah, Hafidhu ala salawat wa salatul musa, when you look at this ayah, ayah number 238, if you look at the ayat before it, and if you look at the ayat after it, the entire passage is talking about divorce. The entire passage is talking about divorce. So for five, six ayat before it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about divorce. When a man and a woman, a marriage, a couple, goes bad and they're not, they're not able to they're not seeing eye to eye anymore. They can't live together anymore. And they decide to go their own separate ways and part ways. Then talaq, divorce occurs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the different procedures of talaq and divorce and how that works. And then Allah says, Hafidhu ala salawat wa salatul musta. Safeguard your prayer. And then the discussion goes right back to talaq and divorce. Why is Allah saying safeguard your prayer in the middle of the ayat about divorce? What's the purpose here? How does this fit into the context? That's for us to figure out and for us to extract the lessons from this. So there's lots of different things and different lessons and different beauties to this. The first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about two people that are having difficulty in their relationship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides two cures or two remedies for their situation. They're suffering through a very difficult, a very fragile emotional state. You're dealing with a lot of difficulties at this moment. A husband and a wife are no longer getting along, they're considering divorce. So Allah provides two solutions. The first one is, He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Forgive one another. This is more closer to the act of taqwa. Forgive one another. Be generous, be kind to one another. Because kindness, generosity will help to remove and erase the evil sentiments or the bad sentiments that are there between you two. So this is one remedy. Be kind to one another. Be forgiving, be generous to one another. And the other remedy Allah says is turn to Salah. Because our relationship with other people goes bad when our relationship with Allah goes bad. When you try to, when you leave, when you neglect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything else in your life will start to deteriorate. It's only a matter of time. That's why the scholars they used to say that repair your relationship with Allah and Allah will repair your relationship with everyone else. Man aslaha ma baynahu wa bayna Allah, aslaha Allah ma baynahu wa bayna nas. Allah will fix your relationship with other people. So first strengthen your relationship with Allah. So this is the first thing. The second thing, the reason why Allah mentions this here is as, is as a warning, is as a reminder. And He's rebuking these two people that are going through this difficulty. This husband and wife, this man and woman. And He's also warning all the rest of us. That when a person neglects the rights of Allah, he cannot be trusted to fulfill the rights of people. When a person will neglect the rights of Allah, how can he be trusted to fulfill the rights of people? When he no longer is careful or cautious about how he deals with Allah, his Lord, his Master, his Creator, his Sustainer, the one who controls everything. 
When he no longer cares about how he deals with Allah, why will he care about anyone else? When the fear of Allah is gone, when that taqwa is gone, then that person won't care about anything else. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu about this, he used to say very, very eloquently, إِذَا كَانَ الْمَرْءُ لِلصَّلَاةِ مُضِيعًا فَلِغَيْرِهَا أَضِيَةً When he says, Umar radiallahu anhu says that when a person begins neglecting his salah, he will become even more neglectful towards everything else. Because if he can't take care of salah, he can't take care of anything else. فَمَنْ لَيْسَ فِيهِ خَيْرٌ لِرَبِّهِ فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ فِيهِ خَيْرٌ لِغَيْرِهِ He says that if a person can be good to his Lord, if a person can be good to Allah, how can he be expected to be good to anyone else? It's impossible. And that's why Umar radiallahu who did he used to pick as governors and chiefs and leaders of different groups of people in different areas? He used to appoint the people whom he used to observe being very particular, very careful about their salah. One time he appointed a person in charge of a certain department and someone came and said that that person's a freed slave and we're not sure what his educational background is and are you sure he's qualified for the position? Umar radiallahu said, I noticed this man, he observes his salah very particularly five times a day in the masjid and he recites Quran every single day with a regular schedule. This person can take care of any responsibility you have This is the attitude. The Prophet ﷺ, Salah was dearer to him than everything else. So this is a very beautiful lesson from this place here in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, guard your prayer, safeguard your Salah, become particular about your Salah, everything else in your life will begin to fall into place. Salah will discipline you. Imagine trying to pray five times a day, as soon as the time comes in, with all the proper etiquettes of Salah, and in the masjid as much as possible. If you have the discipline, if you have the discipline in order to schedule all of this and observe all of this and take care of all of this, there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you can't do. And then on a side note, going back to the original topic, in terms of marriage, how can Salah even improve a marriage? This is very important for us to learn as well. There's plenty of married individuals here. There might be younger people who aren't married, but inshallah one day will be married. Salah from now should become a focal point of all of our lives, from here on out. And how can Salah even improve the marriage of a person? The scholars list a few different qualities that Salah helps a person develop. The first one is that Salah helps to discipline a person, like I mentioned. It creates discipline. It, allow, it, it, it basically makes a person adapt to a schedule. And this is very important in terms of even maintaining a family. You have to be disciplined, you have to be able to maintain the schedule in order to fulfill the rights of the family members. The second thing is that Salah refreshes a person. It revitalizes a person. It, 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 it brings, it rejuvenates a person's spirit and his mind and his soul. And so sometimes it happens, people are people. They start to kind of get frustrated with one another. They even start to kind of grow tired of one another. When that begins to occur, Salah is the way we rejuvenate ourselves. We refresh ourselves. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, the coolness of my eyes has been put in Salah. And there's an analogy here, there's some imagery here. In the desert, imagine being out in the hot burning desert with the hot wind blowing and how it would burn your eyes and dry your eyes out. And then imagine splashing cold water into your eyes. How it would refresh you and rejuvenate you. That's what the Salah does, that's what the Prophet ﷺ said, he used to get from Salah. So Salah can refresh us, so that we're able to deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, situations that having a family brings. The other thing is, in or like I mentioned, in order to connect with our family members, we first have to make sure that we are connected to Allah. It helps, Salah helps us build a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in turn will inshallah help us build a connection with our family members. The next thing is that Salah brings about humility. Salah brings humility in a person. He puts his forehead on the ground. He puts his face on the ground. Bows before Allah. Subjects himself <clears throat> before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This removes the arrogance from a person. And one situation that, one thing that often makes marriages very difficult is arrogance, pride when it enters into the equation. So it allows, performing salah properly makes us more humble. 
increases humility within a person, which in turn will help you even in your personal relationships. The next thing is that Salah, in Salah we seek the forgiveness of Allah. We basically accept our, ourselves as criminals. I am sinful, I am a criminal, I commit sins, and oh Allah, I beg you for your mercy and your forgiveness, and I cannot live or survive without your forgiveness. This makes us realize, when we beg Allah for His forgiveness, when we beg Allah for His mercy, and when we basically remind ourselves of how sinful we are, it becomes easier for us to forgive others as well. Forgiveness is a very key component to any successful personal relationship, particularly marriage. We have to be extremely forgiving of one another. Nobody's perfect. So when we perform salah and we realize how sinful we are and we beg for mercy, this inshallah will serve as a reminder for us to also practice forgiveness in our personal relationships as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice everything that's been said and heard. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.